playing for Coach Candrea was the absolute best. He cares about his players. He believed in me and that made me believe more in myself. He gave us the structure and the fundamentals to build our life, not only as athletes at the University of Arizona, but for future. Thank you, Coach, we love you. Most people look at him as a phenomenal softball coach, but he's just an even better person, an even better man. We can't even put into words what you mean to us, what you mean to the game. Thank you for the impact you've had on our lives as Wildcats, and our sport is forever grateful because of you. Here's a look at the winningest coach of all time also the best on this turf with the eight national championships. Well, through the years, when you think of the Women's College World Series, you can't help but think of Arizona and Mike Candrea. They have been here so often, and they were the team that really captured the hearts of America in the early 90s, that when things started getting televised, they were here and capturing all of those viewers. If you ask 50 coaches in this profession about Mike Candrea, they would all say what a wonderful man he is. He's got that good of a reputation, and he has been such a winner for this sport. Yeah, I think he's impacted every college coach, whether they know him or they don't. He's taken this game to a whole nother level, not only collegiately, but internationally. I think he's exactly who we all want to be. I think he's who we want to be in the game and then you know, off, the, off the field too. So class act, and uh, he's truly impacted the game at so many different levels. Coach Candre is the uh, gold standard of college softball. You know, he has stayed current for a long time, and that's pretty cool as a coach. And, you know, sometimes you think the game passes somebody by. It has not with him. He's just one of the best it's ever been. It's a legacy unlike almost any in college softball history. He has had a career that should be celebrated forever. And honestly, what he's done and how much he's given back to the game, he's always been a coach and a person who just wants to share knowledge, help others, and grow the game. I don't know it's gone for four decades at Arizona. You come in, you learn from greatness, you ascend to greatness, and then you pass those life lessons on. He means so much to us. He means so much to the game. I'm getting emotional just sitting here. He's, uh, he's like a second father to all of us. You know, the tradition of 36 years of coaching, so many lives he's touched. Um, we're just so grateful to be a part of it. It's been a lot of emotions, and that image of the last game ball, home field, and then to see the alums coming back to support, but you just think about the legacy. It's not just him as a coach, but then the players. Credit Mike Andrea starting it off. Three years of walking into an empty airport and seeing this is just the ultimate in sports right now, and I'm I'm just tickled to death with these young ladies. Right, same time, same game. You guys are ready. Get after it. Go on, go on. Here we go. Come on, Arizona. One, two, three. Come on, Arizona. Okay. Thank you very much. I mean, not often you get to do something that you love to do, and then surround yourself with people that you never want to see leave. Every athlete that I ever been a part of at Arizona. It's a lifelong relationship and, and, and as a coach that's what you hope, you know. I, one thing that I've realized in my career, it's uh, you're really only the gatekeeper at the end of the day and I've tried to do the right things the right way and I hope that it has an impact and influence on the kids that I coach. It's hard to imagine him ever not being in the game. Yeah. One of the best. Thank you, everybody. You can take your seats. And thank you all for joining us today for the Mike Candrea farewell press conference. Yesterday, Coach Candrea announced his retirement after a 36-year career that featured 1,674 wins, the most in NCAA history, eight national championships, the most in NCAA history, in 24 trips to the Women's College World Series during his tenure, the most in NCAA history. So the format for today's event will be opening remarks from Dave Hickey, and then we will bring Coach Candrea up to give his remarks, and following Coach's speech, we will open it up to questions from the media. We have a microphone over there. Uh, when it comes time, we'll ask that you line up at that microphone um, to ask your questions. But without further ado, um, it is my pleasure to welcome 
the University of Arizona Vice President and Director of Athletics, Dave Hickey. Thank you, Danny. Appreciate it. <clears throat> Bear with me a little bit. I, my voice is a little bit scratchy from uh, cheering uh, while we're in haven't fully recovered from, from Oklahoma City. But uh, welcome to the University of uh, Arizona. Welcome to the beautiful McHale Center. Um, a special welcome uh, to some uh, folks here in the front row, uh, Tina Candrea. Tina, thanks so much for all of your contributions. Um, know we'll hear more about that. Candrea family members, um, Doby Hillebrand. Thank you, Doby, for being here. Yes, that's a special name in this program. I'm sure we'll hear more about that. And Bev Foster. Bev, a special friend and supporter of this program. Um, our thoughts and, and prayers are with you. So thanks for being here, Bev. Really appreciate it. Um, and I know the Candreas do as well. So, <clears throat> and, and to our past players, so many familiar faces, past staff members, um, past athletic staff members who have uh, been around this program for, for many, many years and supported it. Thank you all for making the effort to be here. Our team that is still here, our coaching staff and uh, the support staff that you'll hear more about, I'm sure. But uh, uh, we, we thank you very much. And a special welcome to our president, uh, Dr. Robbins. Thank you for taking the time to be here and supporting this athletic program, uh, supporting our student athletes. We appreciate that very much. Today represents a celebration of excellence. We honor the legacy of a true Wildcat, great, head coach Mike Candrea. The legacy of Mike Candrea spans four decades. His significant impact will carry on for decades to follow. Mike defined what it means to be a Wildcat. His career embodied the values of this university, the University of Arizona, at the highest levels. He's built a championship pedigree that's unrivaled. As you heard, eight national championships 1,674 career wins, 24 Women's College Series, World Series appearances. There's no doubt that Mike Kendrea is an icon. He put the sport of softball on the map. He was instrumental in its growth nationally and internationally. He made Arizona softball the standard. The standard, the example for any other program in this country to follow. He was a trailblazer. He's responsible for one of the nation's first softball-only facilities. He propelled the sport, the sport's popularity, and helped build its national television coverage. You know, ESPN's ever-growing national coverage uh, of softball isn't possible without Mike Candrea. On top of that, Mike has influenced people's lives. He changed them for the better. He was a coach, a mentor, a leader, and a key figure in the lives of hundreds and hundreds of women who wore the Arizona uniform. He's also impacted the lives of young women, athletes, coaches across this nation, as you heard on the video. He's a true icon and a friend to so many, especially right here in Southern Arizona and in Tucson. His 36 years as a head coach has made an impact on more lives than we can count. And that's what his legacy defines. Mike's legacy will continue here at the U of A. Uh, he'll continue to be part of this program, Arizona Athletics, joining our administrative unit in an advisory role and supporting our programs and supporting our coach development efforts as we go forward. His wisdom and guidance will st still continue here at Arizona, and we're, we're very grateful for that and look forward to it. So as we gather here today to tip a cap, to tip all of our caps to one of the all-time greats, it's our honor to say thank you and pay tribute to everything you've accomplished, Mike. Thank you for defining what it means to be a Wildcat. Thank you for developing generations of young women into leaders, champions, and Wildcats for life. Thank you for setting a standard of true excellence. And thank you, Mike, for all you've done for Arizona Athletics. So, ladies and gentlemen, our head coach, uh, the man himself, Mike Candreo. Mike. Thank you. Well, I was I was doing pretty good till I walked in here. <laughs> Yesterday was a. Uh, um, 
damn, I said I wasn't going to do it. It was, a, it, yeah, it was a rough day um, from 9 in the morning till 6, meeting um, with your players. And truthfully, I'm, I'm honored, um, privileged uh, to represent this university uh, for so many years. Um, the athletes that have really put us on the map. Um, as you heard, I'm just a gatekeeper, and I really feel that. Um, but I hope that we've made uh, the city of Tucson proud, and that was our ultimate goal every year, is to do things with class, um, do it the right way. Um, we all want to win. And um, in the 90s, it sounded like it was pretty easy, because we kind of had a stretch there where we were either winning or finishing second. And then I went into a little drought. And obviously, that little drought, um, um, I was reminded each and every day that Arizona hadn't been back to the College World Series for a while. And unfortunately, this game has grown a lot. Um, hopefully, I've had a little bit of an impact in it, but, but I don't think people really understand the level of play that you're seeing today in college softball. And so my next venture is to try to get uh, people around the country, around the world, the NC2A, to realize they have a special product and sometimes they don't take care of the product, they take care of everything else. Um, good example, we compress our World Series in four days um, with eight teams. Uh, yet, another sport goes two weeks to, to do the same thing. And I think now people are starting to listen because um, softball has come a long ways and it's a lot of the people that are in this room right now that the reason why I'm so proud. Um, you know, I took this job in 1985, and I was a uh, PE professor, physical education professor, um, which there are not many of anymore, um, at Central Arizona College. And uh, I was a baseball guy. You know, I grew up with a bat and ball in my hand. I thought I was going to be in the big leagues like we all dream of when we were young, and um, had a chance to play a lot of baseball and um, coach a lot of baseball. My first uh, year of coaching was 1976. Uh, it was in baseball at Central Arizona College, and we won the national championship. So I'm thinking to myself, this is a pretty e easy gig. You know, I, I can get used to this. Um, but then I had a gentleman walk into my office one day. His name's George Young. And George, if you know anything about track and field, George was a four time Olympian from the University of Arizona, won the bronze medal in Mexico City. And one day he walked into my office and said, Mike, I need your help. And I go, George, I'll do anything for you. What do you need? He goes, I need you to coach the women's softball team. And I was an assistant baseball coach and loved what I was doing. And I said, George, you know, I'm a pretty good baseball coach. I don't know if I want to coach softball. In fact, I don't know much about softball. I had to go out and learn a little bit about softball. And... Um, I said, you know, George, I'll try it. You know, why not? I'm an assistant coach. I get to pull my own strings, see what I can do. And after the first year, I said to myself, damn it, if I can find a pitcher, we can win this thing. And I went out and recruited a young lady named Connie Clark. And Connie Clark just retired from the University of Texas uh, a couple years ago as the head coach. But she was the first pitcher that I actually watched. And I remember going to Sun City, Arizona. Uh, to watch this game with the Sun City Saints and drove up and there's all these golf carts with people my age watching this this gathering and I mean it was packed and I watched it and I was just over I mean just totally impressed with Connie Clark and I figured to myself well someone's got to be recruiting her but on the other hand all she can do is say no so I started recruiting her and sure enough I got her to come to Central Arizona College uh, we won back-to-back -back championships, and um, I got an opportunity to come to the University of Arizona. And I've got to tell you, I think I was the second choice or third choice. I do not think I was the first choice for this job because at that moment, there were five head coaches in the country that were male. And I'm thinking to myself, 
you know, this is a real outside shot for me to get this. And so I came down for an interview. I remember meeting with Bob Bockrath and Sed Dempsey and um, Mary Roby and uh, Rocky LaRose and a lot of the people that have been here through my journey. And um, I remember the day that I got the job and, and I didn't even care what they were paying me. I just wanted an opportunity to coach at the Division One level. I thought this was, I, I went to heaven. So I got here and I remember the first, Stacy was on my team, and um, I remember the first day going out to practice. And um, I noticed that there was a class on the field. It was a PE class. And I said, sir, we got to practice here. We're the softball team. And he goes, well, you're going to have to wait till we're done with class before you get the field. So I'm thinking to myself, that's probably why they hired me is because I know a little bit about physical education, and I would be compassionate about having to share a field with them. So that was the beginning, man. I arrived, and I thought, man, this is the big leagues, you know. And then they showed me this little three-wheeler, and I thought that was kind of a neat thing. And they go, no, that's yours because you're going to need something to drag the field. So when I started here, I did a little bit of everything. And I remember our practices. We started every practice by picking up rocks on the field. And um, so it was a very humbling um, beginning um, but it really has turned out to be a dream come true. And you don't really realize where your paths are going to take you. Um, but there's, I'm here today to thank a lot of people because the one thing I do know is I wouldn't be standing up here if it wasn't for the village that I created to surround me. And so I'm going to try to get through this as quick as I can because I don't want to bore you to death because I could talk for a long time. Uh, but... First of all, I want to thank my mom and dad. My mom and dad aren't here today. They're looking down upon us. Um, but my mom and dad, um, my dad was a jazz musician. My dad really never watched me play baseball. I played baseball because I loved it. Never had to pay to play baseball. Um, my mom was, my dad's Italian, my mom's French. Okay, That's why I have such good looking hair, or I did. I don't anymore. But, um, but my dad was um, com completely differently wired than I was as a jazz musician. And we, um, after he retired from music in New Orleans where I was born, he decided he had one sister. He, was, he had seven sisters in his family. He was the only boy. And they sent him to the Juilliard School of Music. He started playing music with Les Brown and Duke Ellington and lots of big bands. And we ended up in New Orleans where he had met my mom. And um, so... Uh, I was born there, and then when my dad retired from music, he said, we're going to move to Phoenix. And I'm thinking to myself, the Wild Wild West, Phoenix. He goes, yeah, so we got in our black and white station wagon. I don't know, it was a 55 or 58 station wagon. Drove through Texas forever and ever and ever. And every time I stopped somewhere, I was looking for the Cowboys and Indians because that's what I thought Arizona was all about. Little to be known that this has become my home. But I, I want to thank my mom and dad for, for raising me the right way. Um, and I think a lot of it is the work ethic. My dad, when I left for college, gave me 20 bucks, said good luck. And I looked at him like, is that for the week? He goes, no, that's it. You're going to figure this out. And, of course, I had kids that I gave them everything that I didn't have, and it didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. But... Um, I, I really miss them and, and wish they were here today. I want to thank my wife, Tina, um, for putting up with me. Um, it's not easy to marry someone and not know anything about softball and get thrown in the Olympic Games. And um, she has been just a rock for me, um, puts up with a lot. And truthfully, that's really one of the reasons why I came to my conclusion that it's probably time um, to retire. So... I can probably try to make up time that I need to with my own family members. One thing about coaching, it, it, you spend more time with other people's kids than your own. And there's times I can't get back, but I'm going to try like hell to try to get it back because i got two grandsons right now. would love to see them play football or play sports. But um, Tina, you're a rock. Um, my kids, Michael and Michelle, uh, both live up in, in um, Chandler, and uh, my two grandsons, Jalen and Josiah. Uh, can't wait to spend time with them. Uh, stepson Ryan and his wife Kate, um, both U of A grads, by the way. Um, my stepson Sean and his wife Cassie, 
both U of A grads. Um, and they're expecting a little boy in January, so we've got something to be excited about in the near future. Um, my siblings. I wish they were here today, but I'm sure they're watching. But my brother Nick uh, and his wife Stacy. Nick was my only brother, but my older brother, and he used to take me out in the backyard and just pound ground balls at me as hard as he could, try to make me cry and try to make me tough. And um, uh, I know Laura, you know about that, you know. We were all raised a little differently. I mean, we, we played catch every day. We played wiffle ball. We played pickle. We did everything that we could with a bat and ball. And Nick was really an influence for me. He was a high school coach at Washington for 30-something years. And then all of a sudden, he got a golf job at Paradise Valley Community College. And I, I was envy of him. I go, Nick, man, that's, that is the job you want. You know, you get to play golf every day. And I'd be damned if he didn't start coaching softball. And now he's a softball coach at Paradise Valley Community College. They're not very good, but academically they're really good, so the president likes them, and, and um, things are good. Uh, my sister Kathy and her husband Larry uh, live up in Glendale. My sister Lori and her husband Mike. This is a great story because Mike was my best friend in college. Uh, he played shortstop. I played second base. And I brought him home too many times, and he ended up marrying my sister. And I knew I was in trouble when my mom started calling Mike and asking what he wanted for dinner during the weekends. Um, but great family. Um, lots of nieces and nephews up in the Phoenix area uh, that we'll be able to catch up with. Um, you know, when I came here, I, I don't know, most of you probably know, but I commuted for 21 years. Um, 21 years, 72 miles, one way. People say, you're pretty stupid. And I go, well, I, I didn't know anything different at the time. I would just get in the car and go. And I went through quite a few cars back there. Uh, the gas was pretty cheap. Um, the I-10 was two lanes. I used to read the sports page on my way down. I mean, some of the things I did. We didn't have cell phones. Um, but I did that because uh, my first wife, Sue, was an accountant and um, loved her job and we lived out in the country and raised some pigs and had some horses and thought that was kind of cool until I got the vet bill the first time when a horse got sand colic. Um, but um, I want to thank her for, for actually raising our kids because I used to get up in the morning at 7 o'clock, drive to Tucson, come home at 8, get home, eat dinner, go to bed, get up and do the same thing. And most of the time it was for seven days a week. But that's what I love to do. I had a passion to do it, and she allowed me to do it. And um, I know she's looking down upon us, too. Um, there's so many people I want to thank, and I, I'm sure I'm going to forget people, but I'm going to try really hard. Um, Peter Likens, uh, a president that truly made an impact in my life. Um, it's not often that you get a chance to spend a lot of time with the president of the university. We've had some that I really never had a chance to sit down and talk with. But Peter was one that um, we spent a lot of time. Maybe he was a former wrestler and ath ath you know, an athlete and kind of understood the process. But then we got Dr. Robbins, and Dr. Robbins is a tremendous golfer and a, a true advocate of, of college athletics. And I just want to say thank you for all of your support and, and your ear every now and then. And, um, and uh, the other day he... he he gave me a backwards compliment. I don't know if it was a compliment or it was something else, but we were talking about Jed Fish, our new football coach, and I said, hey, does Jed play golf? And Dr. Robbins says, well, yeah, he, he plays. You know, he was a tennis player. He's a pretty good athlete. He's a little better than you and I. And I go, oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> so I kind of know where I stand with my golf and Dr. Robbins, but thank you. Administration, I've had so many good people to work for, and I go back to Cedric Dempsey, you know, Cedric ended up being the uh, executive director of the NC2A, but he was the first AD here that I got to work under, uh, Mary Roby. Uh, Mary was wonderful to work with. Every time I sent her, an, a, it wasn't a text message or an email, it was a, a mimeographed note, and she would always correct my grammar and my penmanship. And I said, Mary, I'm here to coach softball, you know? And, uh, but I uh, love her to death, miss her dearly. Jim Livengood, uh, another AD that uh, was a wonderful friend of mine. Rocky LaRose, we all know Rocky and 
the legacy she's left here, and I think Rocky had a big part in me getting the job down here because um, I don't think Mary really wanted to hire me, but I think um, Rocky tr tried to figure it out and got me the opportunity. Greg Byrne, um, we all know Greg, and, and um, Greg was a, a good mentor and a good friend. Erica Barnes, not often you get to work for one of your former players. And unfortunately, I've, I've went through the whole trials and tribulations, and now I get to watch Erica as an administrator and um, really want to thank her for all she's done. And now she's on the softball committee, and so we have a real long list of things she needs to accomplish, or else it will be a failure for us. And then Dave Hickey. Dave um, came in here, and um, I, I must honestly say, sometimes, you know, administration, administrators will overpromise and underdeliver. And I've always been trying to be one of those when I recruit. Um, I want to underpromise and overdeliver. And Dave came in here and, and truly um, made my life better. And um, for a couple of reasons. Um, one was getting the Hillenbrand Stadium that we have today built. You know, I never thought that it was going to ever happen. There was always something else that we had to do. But damn it, he said we we're going to do it, and we did it. We did it in six months. And um, it's every day I go out there, I want to pinch myself because I've been able to live through three facilities. And Doby's here right now, um, lead gift for Hillenbrand Memorial Stadium, number one. And I miss Bill dearly, wish he was here. Um, talk about a great friend and someone that was just so passionate about helping Arizona softball. And without the, the Hill and Brands, we probably wouldn't have been where we're at. And then um, being able to move into the new Hill and Brand Stadium, um, the Lappin family was very important as a lead gift. And we have many donors that have helped us. And that's been the fun part for me is cultivating relationships. And, and a big part of that is I, I never asked anyone for any favors. And so when we started building this facility and we had a pretty good price tag on it, I started going back to asking for favors from some of those people that I was just kind to, you know. And they all stepped up and helped us out. Um, support staff, so many people. I think that's the reason why I've always stayed here. I've had many opportunities to leave here. But every time I came back here, I realized it was the people that made the difference. It was the athletes, and it was the people that I worked with. And I've had so many great people that are working with us today. Um, but a couple I want to really talk about. One is um, Dick Barch. Dick, Dick is no longer with us, but Dick was our traveling secretary back in the day. He was the money man. When we go to the College World Series, the girls knew that they would get more money if they got to the World Series. So that was a pretty good motivation. Um, but Dick was just a, a true uh, friend of mine, still is. Uh, Brittany Mead, um, for all the work she's done for us, um, just a relentless worker and visionary and uh, has really been a big part of our program. Stacy Iveson, um, I can't say enough about Stace. Stace, a great coach in her own right, um, left the coaching ranks to come back to help me, um, which is pretty selfless, and she has done anything we've ever asked her to do. And um, so I can't thank you enough, Stacy, for being here and coming back here. Uh, being able to watch you in a uniform with the little collars on them was kind of fun. And Stacy can tell you a lot of stories, and we'll have a celebration someday, hopefully, and be able to tell stories. But that team wasn't great. Um, I knew it from the very beginning, so I figured we're going to be really mentally tough, and we're going to do a lot of running. So they used to run from here to Alvernon and back every, every day to start practice off. And my goal was for all of them to run a 10K together. And there were some kids that had never ran. And when we ran that 10K, there were tears coming down uh, Lisa Bernstein's eyes. You know, she had never run that far. But um, it's been a long process. Um, Danny Martinez. Danny, I've, I've known you since you were little. I've protected your job numerous times <laughs> along the way. And um, you've learned from one of the best, and that's Dud, Tom Duddleston. Um, Tom um, was so much fun to work with. Uh, I remember going to the World Series, and I'm expecting this nice media packet put together. And I look at ours, and I'm going, Jesus, Tom, how long does this put, take you to put together, five minutes? You know, he goes, oh, they, that's all they need. They, need. they need information. They don't need 
glitz and glamour. And I go, all right. So the first day he comes down to get my lineup for the first game of the World Series, I said, do you want a copy of it? He goes, no, I get this napkin here. I'm just going to write it on the napkin. He was amazing. How he kept things together, I don't know. But um, a class of his own in sports information. And, Tom, I want to thank you for everything you've done. And then I want to thank some um, press that are no longer here that I truly had a wonderful time uh, back in the day. Um, Corky Simpson, um, Jack Rickard, Anthony Gimino. Some of these guys are still hanging out a little bit. Uh, Greg Hansen. I always knew when Greg showed up that we were getting close to the College World Series. So that was always a good thing. And I tried to stay on his good side because I know that Sunday notebook, um, a lot of things can happen there. He knew that I was going to retire before I did. And Steve Rivera, another good friend. But th these guys were really the ones that helped us kind of send out the story of Arizona softball before we had social media. It was a little more difficult. It was by newspaper, by print. And um, I always love sitting around talking to them and uh, just want to thank them for everything they've done. Then I got to go to the coaches that have coached with me. And I, I, I tried to remember all of them. I don't know. I, I hope I did. But I'm going to start with Larry Ray. Larry spent 16 years um, as an assistant with me. Um, wonderful human being, a great, great coach, and I just want to thank him publicly for everything he's done for Arizona softball. Uh, Bill Barth, one of the first uh, characters that I had on my staff. Uh, didn't get paid much, but absolutely was, had a passion for outfield play. Uh, our outfielders were really good back then, and I, I got to thank Bill for his hard work. Gail Galt, um, a former player here that was on our first staff. Lisa Bernstein, Lisa played for me then coached with me, and then ran my camps for 37 years. Uh, I would have never run a camp without Lisa. Uh, we called her the Sarge, so you know why she was running the camp. Um, Jody Pruitt, another former player, um, outstanding high school coach up in the Phoenix area. Stacy, um, coached here for me and did a wonderful job. Nancy Evans, former player. Alicia Hollowell, former player. Teresa Wilson. Uh, former coach at Washington and Oregon, outstanding coach. Uh, Mark Blair, um, who spent some time here. And then our present staff, Caitlin Lowe, um, which I'll get a chance to talk more about her. But um, so happy that I talked her into coming back as a um, director of ops, I think, for a year. She wasn't very good at that, but um, she's much better as a coach. So. Love her to death. Taryn Mowat, another former player, had to steal her away from Ole Miss and um, didn't take much to do that. Um, Carlos Armillo, Carlos was our volunteer coach through BP every day this year. And then I really want to thank Bruce Johnson, our trainer, and our medical staff for all the work they did this year getting us through COVID. I mean, it was a crazy year, and I commend these young ladies for everything that they did just to get us onto the field. And, you know, the one thing that I'm proud of is that we never had a crack in our bubble, uh, never lost any time on the field. And to me, that's really a commitment to our medical staff and to Bruce. Um, Emily, uh, everyone likes Emily because she's always got great gear that she gives you. But, Emily, thanks for all your hard work and dedication. And, um, and then I want to acknowledge Paula Knoll. Paula Knoll was the coach prior to me. Uh, Paula Knoll, Rocky LaRose, and Judy Sprague. And so the tradition of this program goes way back. And um, uh, like I said, I'm the gatekeeper, and I've just been blessed to be able to keep the gates open um, for the last 37 years and open them up for um, Caitlin to, to move into the next era. And so I'm very honored and um, feel very good about that. Some coaching mentors I want to mention uh, many of them for grade school, believe it or not. Um, I had a great upbringing with teachers that used to pick me up on the way to school and take me to ASU basketball games and just absolutely, I, I had no choice but to get into physical education. I thought I wanted to be a business major until I took accounting. I got rid of that real quick. Went right to what I loved to do, and that was physical education. But I want to thank Ted Christie. Ted was my high school coach. Um, played football here at the University of Arizona. Just an absolute stud and a guy that I feared. I mean, all he had to do was walk and look at me and I would do anything. Um, but 
he, he made a huge impact in my um, choices to go into coaching. Uh, Ron Zimmerman, uh, my first baseball coach, um, and then um, Kenny Richardson. Kenny was my, the guy that hired me. Uh, I played for Kenny, and then I had elbow surgery. I had Tommy John surgery before Tommy John, and I thought maybe they would name it Mike Candrea, but they didn't. So I knew damn well I wasn't going to get to the big leagues. Um, but uh, after I had elbow surgery, couldn't play anymore, Kenny asked me to start coaching. So I started coaching at a very young age. And um, Kenny is no longer with us, but um, just a great baseball mind. And I, I was fortunate to surround myself with a lot of great baseball guys. Um, you know, Jim Brock, um, Freddie Nelson, um, uh, Gary Ward, I mean, the junior college league back then was just loaded with talent and loaded with great coaches. And the one thing I always did is I've always been a student of the game, and any time I had a chance to spend time with those guys, I would pick their brain forever. So i got to thank them for giving me my foundation uh, with the game of baseball. Um, here in Arizona, Dick Tomey, dearly miss him. Um, he was a coach's coach, uh, spent a lot of time with him, Used to dress next to him. Um, yeah, just a wonderful human being. Even played golf with him. He was pretty competitive. In fact, I remember some times when I'm going, Dick, you can't hit the ball out of that. He goes, I can hit the ball out of this. And about seven strokes later, we ended up losing the match because he's trying to hit out of this prickly pair. Um, Lute Olson, dearly miss Lute. Uh, another guy that you, you watch work, and God, he taught me really um, what it was like to to build a network. Um, I mean, just a tremendous recruiter, did everything with class. Of course, he'd walk in a room and just his presence, everyone just kind of went, you know, Lute, Lute had it all. Um, but Lute um, probably still has the first dollar he made because he wasn't really quick getting in his pocket. I, I can tell you that. Um, my good buddy, Rick LaRose, and Rick is here, but Rick uh, was a golf coach here for many years, um, highly successful. Um, I, I got to tell you, and, and I'll say it publicly, but he, he's my brother. We've spent that much time together, and, and um, sometimes I, you know, he, he can be a pain in the ass. Um, he can give it to you, and sometimes I see him coming and I want to go the other way, but, but um, truly Rick has been a guy that's been with me for a long time and has supported me, and, and um, we spend Christmas together uh, with our family, and um, so glad he's still around and in my life. Frank Bush, we all know Frank and the job he did with swimming, another great coach here, Jerry Kendall. Um, you know, I, I could never be like Jerry because I raised my voice too much. And sometimes words come out that probably shouldn't come out. But Jerry, the one thing I noticed about Jerry, Jerry was just so calm, cool, and collective. And I realized there, there's a lot of different ways that you can skin a cat and motivate people. But I was at an ASU U of A baseball game one year, and there was a play at the plate. They called our runner out, and I was so pissed off. I wanted to run on the field and start screaming at the umps. And Jerry goes, well, how'd you see it? Well, I saw him out. Okay, well, okay. I'm going, Jerry, get in his face. <laughs> you know? But what a wonderful human being. Um, Jim Wing. Love Jim to death, a guy that would just absolutely talk the game all the time. Uh, Jerry Stitt, um, those are my guys. And then Rich Rod, and uh, Rich Rod and I are still text buddies, and he never forgets to, to congratulate us on a victory. Um, but he was fun to watch. Sean Miller, I used to love watching his practices. Just intense, um, good man. I want to thank our field crew. You know, one of the things I said when I came here is I want to make sure that we take care of everyone that takes care of us. And it's the little people that really make a difference in your program and will run through walls for you, and it's how you treat them. And, and so um, there's some really special people. Bo Ventura is not here anymore, but Bo was just tremendous to work with. Corn Tony Cordova, uh, John Slater. You guys, if you ever met John Slater, you'll never forget him. Um, tremendous guy. And Johnny Romero this year. And... There's a lot of other guys that put time and effort uh, into our field. We don't have to pick up rocks anymore. We don't have to drag the field. There's beautiful lines, and um, our kids are spoiled. But we thank them every day. Special thank you to Carla Garrett, my first strength coach. 
Uh, she was probably one of the best team builders I've ever been around. Um, just had a knack with young people to get them to work hard and to say thank you. And I thought that was a pretty special thing. Uh, Neil Willie, who's not with us anymore, was my next strength coach, Rob Harris. Uh, and now we have Ashley. Where's Ashley at? Ashley's, there's Ashley, our new strength coach who we're very excited about and uh, will do a great job. But those are the people that really spend a lot of time with our athletes. And um, you got to have the right person in that because they can make a big difference. Um, to all our fans and our donors, you, you know, you guys have really allowed us to keep this program relevant over the years. And so I, I, I can't thank you enough for buying into softball and, and the things that we've tried to do. Then every player, you know, this is the last but not least, but you know what? These, they're the ones that have made it happen. You know, I've, I've been on a good ride watching some really outstanding players play this game. And the passion that they played the game with when they put on the uniform, one of the greatest things we have here is the tradition. And I always go back. It's so great to see Laura here. And, I mean, God, Kay Lee, I mean, Cindy, I mean, Ken, I can go on and on. I want to thank them all personally for their efforts and how they played the game and how they sent it on to the next generation because they did a wonderful job representing this university. And their expectations were pretty damn high, you know. They walk in here, there's only one thing they expect, and that's excellence every day. I didn't have to worry about them holding people accountable because they did. They held each other accountable. And um, I'm just blessed to be able to have coached so many great athletes. And so I'm, I kind of reap the benefits of picking the right people. And I think that's a big part of it today. This group this year, you know, seven seniors that came back for their fifth year after COVID hit. Um, and I talked yesterday until I was blue in the face, cried till I was blue in the face. But what a special group um, to, to go through what we did. Um, we fell short. And we all hurt because one of the standards that these young ladies set was you go to the World Series, you win the World Series. And it's getting tougher and tougher. But I can promise you one thing. I told every one of them I can look them in the mirror right now, and I love what they did for this program this year. It was a tremendous ride. Um, they did it with class. They did it with dignity. They're great people. They're great students. 3.5 GPA. And I always said I'll take a 2-8 in a national championship versus a 3-5. But anyway, we're celebrating the 3-5, and that's okay. But I just can't, I can't thank the athletes enough for, for allowing me um, to watch you play and to watch you grow. And my ultimate goal here has always been um, I don't want this to be a flash in the pan. I want to be a consistent winner. But more importantly, I want to build relationships that are going to last a lifetime. And I, can, I never thought that I would get a chance to go to so many weddings and be able to celebrate life experiences with them. And I will continue to do that um, because that's really what it's all about at the end of the day. You know, softball comes to an end. I'm kind of figuring that out right now. Uh, I told Tina this morning I felt like I was speaking at my own funeral. I don't know what it was, but it was tough, you know. But I'm happy. I'm, I'm elated. Uh, it's the right thing. Um, I'm looking forward to the next chapter. I'm looking forward to uh, cheering on these young ladies as we move forward. And Caitlin Lowe will do an outstanding job uh, leading this program. And um, at the end of the day, that's all I really wanted. I wanted to be the gatekeeper, and I wanted to make sure that I did the right things for the next generation. And I really believe that this program is better off than it was when I found it. Um, it's been so much fun. I owe all of you um, for this great career, and um, I just want to say thank you, and God bless each and every one of you, because it has been truly an honor to be called a coach at the University of Arizona. Thank you.
Thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll now start with the question and answer portion. Um, so if there are any media members that would like to ask Coach a question, there's a microphone right over there if you want to go uh, take the microphone and ask. Or maybe not. <laughs> okay. This is the hard part nowadays. I'll get this started, Coach. Okay. Great to see you again. Thank you. Hey, Coach, just when did you begin to, at what point over this 36 years, did you begin to kind of look at the broader picture of the impact that you wanted to have on this game? Was it after you started winning the national championships and your voice kind of became louder within the industry? Well, it's, that's a good question, and, I, and I'm going to answer it this way. When I, as a young coach, I kind of defined my success on whether we won a championship or not. And in the 90s, it was pretty easy to define it that way. But as the, the sport grew, and I felt like I could have an impact on growing the sport, I also realized that I had to redefine what success is going to be in our program. Because um, to me, there came a day when I said, you know what, my goal here is to make sure that these kids are prepared for life after softball. And that really kind of took a lot of pressure off kids, off myself, off everyone, is to, to enjoy it, enjoy the process, you know, because for a while there, man, it was like I thought the sun came up and went down whether I won or I didn't win, and I'd beat myself up. And that's one poor thing about coaching is you, you kind of blow through the victories and you agonize over the defeats. I always tell people that when I got, when I got beat, it felt like I had a wad of gum under my shoe and it was 110 degrees outside and I was trying to get rid of it. And so um, I think a little maturity, a little vision, um, a little family um, life lessons that I was, I was taught, you know. I mean, there was a time in my life I was coaching the national team in 90, 94, getting ready for the Olympics in 96. I was an assistant. And I was in St. John's, Newfoundland. And I'm in this little dorm room. And I was there for a month, and for some reason I was miserable, and I couldn't figure it out because I just we just finished winning a championship. I'm coaching the best team in the world, but something wasn't right with my life. And I came home and walked in the house, and Michael was a sophomore in high school at the time, and he didn't say, "Dad, welcome home." He said, "Dad, can we talk?" And so my ears perked up, and he said, "Dad, um, would you consider dropping out of the USA coaching pool so that you can watch me play baseball?" And that was one of the hardest lessons I've learned in life. It just hit me with a ton of bricks, and I did. I dropped out of the coaching pool at that time, coached Michael for the next three summers, along with a good friend of mine, Clint Myers, who ended up coaching some softball too. And, uh, but if it wasn't for Michael to wake me up and say, Dad, you know, we need more than just what you're doing. We like the victories, but I need you as a dad. And I can honestly say right now that I've, I've, I have failed sometimes to be able to be that person um, and it's hard because when you're so invested into something it's like trying to find balance yet you're trying to be the best at what you do it's hard to have that balance but I've tried to work very hard at trying to find it and so that's another good thing about what's going to go on is being able to catch up with some of those moments coach what's been the most report re rewarding part over the last 36 years Well, doing what you love to do. So I, I've never looked at this as coming to work because this is my passion. And so I can honestly say that that's been the case. I've, 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 I've never counted the days. I never worried about vacations because, you know, we're pretty much year-round with recruiting and everything. Um, but it's the athletes. It's the people that bring you back. You know, and I think to me, the, the, the more athletes I got and the more I got a chance to watch them grow as young women, as powerful young women, as successful in life, you kind of look at that and go, wow, this is, this is what it's all about. You know, because in softball, you're not going to make a million dollars playing softball. Unfortunately, they should. They could. But they don't. And so the next best victory is to be proud of them with who they become in life. 
And one of the things that I started doing a long time ago is in my planner every day I have every birthday of every kid I've tried to coach. And I try not to miss a birthday. So I send it. And that's the only thing I like about text messages, by the way. Because it used to be a phone call. It used to take forever. But now I can text message those kids. And to me, that is, that is my brightest moment in the morning is to be able to text a former player and say happy birthday. And then to get something back from them, it allows me to stay in contact with them. And I want to stay in contact with them for a lifetime. So it's pretty special. And then you said there were times where you could have left. Was there yeah. one time where you were thinking about leaving and what led you to stay? Well, I, I mean, I, I went on some interviews. You know, and I just never found anything that I, I, I felt like I wanted to leave this place. I mean, you know, I traveled around the world with the national team, and every time I came back to Tucson, I wanted to stop and kiss the ground. For some reason, those Cantalita Mountains started to get to me. And that beautiful golf course that I live on, it's like quality of life. You know, and this place provided me the best quality of life. It wasn't about the money. It wasn't about going to China and coach a national team for lots of money, I would be miserable because I, there's nothing I like to eat there, you know. <laughs> coach, congratulations on a great career. Thank you. Uh, P.J. Brown, I think, wrote in the Arizona Daily Star, it's the worst kept secret in the world that you were going to retire. I think a lot of people knew and anticipated were hoping the stay was going to come. But can you run through the timeline of when you started thinking about that it was maybe time to step aside and pass the torch on in your conversations with Dave Hickey and others in your family included? Um, well, to be honest with you, um, I was planning on probably retiring at the end of last year before COVID hit. And I decided because of COVID that I want to come back and finish this. I hope that answers your question. I have not, I mean, I've, I had conversations with Dave and our administration, and I really did not realize that it had gotten, it blew open when I got to the College World Series. And Holly Rose said, can we, can we make an announcement? I go, no. I said, I want to make it on my own terms, you know. I'm going to do it my way, kind of like Frank Sinatra did. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, congratulations Thank once you. again um, on really bringing softball to the old Pueblo and at a national stage. And I want to follow up on Rich's uh, question as well. Um, at what point did you give a reflection to the people on your team and others that you were going to retire. And I know it was, like they had said, one of the worst kept secrets, but what was the reaction of, of the players and others when you finally said, you know what, this is gonna be a done deal? And how much begging and pleading came your way from the administration, the fans, the players to say, no, you're still young, you're still youthful. Keep at it, we need you another five years. Well, I'm not still young and I'm not still youthful. <laughs> so that answers that, but, but no, I, I um, there was a time that I had um, shared it with our senior class and um, just felt like I did not want this to be the topic and wanted to wait till we were done. And I really kind of planned that we were still going to be playing today, to be honest with you. So, so Coach, um, during this time, a lot of your former players have come out and said how much of a father figure you've been to them over the years. How does that make you feel as a coach, uh, knowing that you've had that kind of impact on their lives? It's what it's all about. Yeah. I, that's why I say it's an honor. You know, and. I've just, I've always tried to do what I feel was right. Sometimes you don't. I mean, I can't say that every kid that's been through the Arizona program has left happy, but that's kind of part of competition. Um, but at the end of the day, I, I wanted them to know that I cared about them as an individual. And I, I, I realized a long time ago, you have, if you, can, if you can help the person out, then you can help the athlete out. But you can't help the athlete out until you 
help the person. And so these young ladies know whether you are real or whether you're not real. And I, I want them to be able to be a part of my life forever. And to me, that's the highest honor that I can take away from my coaching career. It's not about the wins, although if you, you know, there's some, you, know, you still have to deal with pot shots on social media about people that have no idea about athletics and about the relationships and the time and commitment that we all spend together. Um, it's kind of sad. And so that's the one area that I'm glad I won't have to deal with because it's, it's, it's pretty frightening when you, when you do everything in the world that you can and you, you have a good career, yet you, you, know, you get an email from a guy that says, hey, you, know, you need to retire, you need to get out of here, it's blah, 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 blah. It's like, oh, really? And I usually don't answer those, but I answered this one. <laughs> and he, you know, he said he was an alumni. I said, you're not an alumni. And so it, it gets tough, you know, and I understand it. You, you got to have broad shoulders. But the one thing I don't like is when, when, when people attack players that are just busting their ass and doing the right things and have no idea. They've never been in the batter's box with someone throwing 72 miles an hour. They don't know much about the game, but they have all the answers. And then, then they berate young people, 17, 18, 19, 20-year-olds, I think that's wrong, and I'm going to fight that. Maybe that'll be my next venture is just sit on social media and grab some of those guys and <laughs> li line them up at Hill and Brand and say, hey, why don't you come show us how it's done? So, but there's a lot of good stuff too, you know. So, Coach, when you look back at your 36 years and everything that you've accomplished, what are your top moments here at the U of A? Oh, I couldn't tell you. I mean, it's just, it's, it's all wrapped in one big bubble wrap. You know, every, every moment's different. Every team's different. You know, every championship's different. I, I've never tried to compare players. We've had some great players, and, you know, someone will try to compare Jesse Harper to Laura Espinosa, and I, I won't do it. They're, they're different. And, and the game was different back then. You know, I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. Some of these kids played the game when it was aluminum bats, and those things weren't very hot, you know. <laughs> and it was a white ball with white seams from 40 feet. Try facing Michelle Granger, where all you see is her foot and a ball throwing 72 trying to hit her. I was just glad when we made contact. Okay. But, yeah, it's – I'm just blessed to have – to do what I've been doing – for so long, been surrounded by great people, and um, been lucky. You know, at the end of the day, there's a lot of people that put hard work into this game, but I, I feel like sometimes um, the good Lord gave me a little edge to to have some success. But I don't. I'm not a numbers guy. I'm not a history guy. You know, I'm. I always tell our kids, "Be where your feet are," and that's kind of where I live. It's, you know, what have I done today? And that's, I think that's helped me weather the storm, is not worry about the future and not worry about the past. Coach Kendra, you talked a lot about uh, Coach Olson and Coach Tomey, some of the legends here uh, at the University of Arizona. I was wondering if you could talk about the next generation. Adia Barnes talks an awful lot about you. Jay yeah. Johnson talks about your friendship, your mentorship. Can you talk about some of the coaches that look up to you yeah. as a mentor here? Well, I'm excited about my next chapter. And, and, you know, this spring we've had one of the best springs in a long time. And you think, you look at our coaches right now. Adia, tremendous job this year. Clancy Shields in tennis. Um, baseball, I think, is going to make a strong run. Um, Jay's done a wonderful job. Um, um, Jim, Jimbo. In golf, Laura Ionello. I mean, we've got really good coaches here. And um, I take it very seriously when they call me up and say, hey, can we talk? And they ask questions. And to me, that's a compliment. You know, I, I look forward to that. Uh, John Court, you know, John came by my office yesterday. Um, gave me a big hug. He's a big guy, you know. 
Then he started crying. I'm going, don't do that. I've been, do I've been crying for nine hours. But that's, that's the stuff as a coach that you, that you remember. And I, I've always wanted to try to make an impact in the game and impact in coaches. I've always loved to share information, whether some of my information was good or bad, you know, but it was information that they could take. And, and I think that's what I'm proud of is um, being known as someone that has helped grow the game because I've been willing to, to spend time with the little people. You know, it doesn't matter who you are. If you send me an email, I'm going to respond. And to me, I think that's, that's part of our job, you know. Part of your job as a coach at this level is to mentor. And so I'm looking forward to being able to hang out with our coaches here in McHale and, and other places. I, I've never had a chance to really observe a lot of practices. And that's something that's on my bucket list. I want to see how other people do it and continue to learn, even though I – might help my golf, I don't know, but um, it, it, would, it would be interesting. Quick follow-up. Uh, I know that you have ultimate long-term plans, but short-term plans. How are you going to enjoy yourself? What are you going to do with your family? What are you going to do well, over the next month? Well, funny you ask, but short-term plans. I'm, um, Tina and I are leaving next week for Italy. Um, we will be there a month. It's kind of a compassion trip for me. The head coach for the Italian national team passed away from covid about four or five months ago and asked me if I would come be an advisor for them. And um, I had said, well, Italy, hmm, so I can make this a vacation and do a little work. And so, yeah, we're going to go there for three weeks. I'm going to be with, with their team and they're going to be going to the European championships. And then they wanted me to go to the Olympics with them. I said, uh -uh, can't do that. I said, the only way I'm going to be at the Olympic Games is if I have red, white, and blue on. And I just want you to understand that from the get-go. And but so I'm going to go there and try to help them as much as I can. And then the fourth week, uh, Tina and I were going to go down to Tuscany, San Gimignano, and um, you know observe some of the um, vineyards and see how they see how they grow grapes. Very interested in that. So that's my short-term plans. And then hopefully come back to work where we can see a normal. Um, McHale Center, walk down the halls and visit people and get another season going. But, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very proud right now of our staff. Uh, you know, Jet Fish, Tommy Lloyd, all of them right now I think are, are people that, that have the right vision. And um, you have to be involved in this community. And I, I think right now we have some people. I think Adia is going to pack this place. I'm really looking forward to walking in here and seeing 12,000 people. Um, watching a women's basketball game and unfortunately if it was last year it would have happened you know but yeah we've got a lot to, to look forward to and I'm looking forward to um, the masterful job Kate will do so definitely not leaving you talked about a lot soaking up the moments over the last couple of weeks so just how would you sum up being able to enjoy those moments hmm. with with this group well I one of the things that I've tried to do is enjoy every little moment, and there were so many good moments. I mean, I go back to beating Ole Miss here, um, just a phenomenal feeling for our program, and then to watch them masterfully um, beat an Arkansas team at Arkansas. Um, to me, that was so heartwarming. Um, it was unbelievable, um, the, um, the job they did to get us back to the College World Series. And so um, I have really enjoyed every day, not just every moment, but every day with this group. And knowing what we've had to go through, I think we're all looking forward to just getting on the field and being able to play the game that we love. All right, thank you, everybody. That will conclude today's press conference. Um, we will have opportunities for one-on-ones with Coach Kendrea in our media room. Um, if you would like that, you can wait outside in the donor lounge, and we'll kind of go one by one in there. But other than that, that concludes today's event. Um, we want to thank you all for coming, and, and once again, thank you, Coach, for everything, and, and congratulations.
Dreaming this since I was young, so baby girl, I'll be going till I'm gone.